What's going on guys? It's me, Tim Riddick, back with another video about another camera that I own. But today is not going to be about a Leica camera, which is probably something you are used to seeing on my channel. But it's really about my first squeeze, my main squeeze for when I first started shooting with film. As a lot of people, I started with digital cameras and one of my very first digital cameras was the Canon 5D. So naturally, when I started shooting with film, I had all of these Canon lenses. So I was looking for a Canon body and that is where the Canon EOS 3 enters into the picture of things. Now the Canon EOS 3 was released in 1998. It is essentially the Canon 5D uh, <laughs> Mark 1 on steroids, but shooting with film. There's another Canon body, the Canon 1V, that Canon also released um, after this camera that is really the professional uh, film camera for photographers for back in the 90s and the early 2000s. But the Canon EOS 3 is actually no slouch when it comes to shooting 35 millimeter film. This camera has 45 autofocus points. It auto rewinds and forwards your film. It has this really unique eye autofocus. I'll go into that a little bit later on. Uh, it, it takes EF mount lenses. It can literally take any EF mount lens and you know it has an 8000 shutter speed so you can shoot in broad daylight with this camera with low speed film and still get wonderful images now the Canon EOS 3 is very near and dear to my heart because it was my first 35 millimeter film camera that I bought after I started shooting weddings professionally. Now, the Canon EOS 3 and 1V were the last few uh, 35 millimeter film cameras that Canon actually put out before moving completely digital. I will also say, uh, if you've ever shot a DSLR, you can literally pick this camera up and just shoot with it. Its simplicity is awesome. It has just about everything one would want in a film camera, just in a bigger body. Now I know the sexy thing right now is to shoot with Leica cameras and I love Leica M-mount cameras. They are fantastic. But if you wanted something that you can literally put in aperture priority or in manual mode and change a few levers and autofocus, and have something that you can have really great results, then the Canon EOS 3 or EOS 3, however you want to pronounce it, is the camera that you would want to start with if you're new to shooting films, particularly 35 millimeter film. I'm gonna give you in this video three reasons why this should be your next film camera when you are looking at buying a new film camera. As a film photographer, I'm always looking for a couple of different things. I am looking for ease of use. I am looking for something that sometimes with younger kids that can autofocus and get out of my way quickly and something that is going to produce great results. And this literally fits all of that. Do I wish it was smaller? Yes. But, you know, before the whole mirrorless uh, situation with all of our new digital cameras, I shot DSL, DSLR, so this kind of just fit right in to my arsenal of things to shoot. And I didn't have to worry about having a different set of lenses, kind of like I have to have with my Leica cameras. I have to have in-mount lenses, but with uh, with this camera that I have to shoot at an entirely different kit, whereas with I'm shooting my Canon cameras, I can essentially use the same lenses for my EOS R6 that I'm currently recording on that with an adapter that I can use this Canon EOS 3 camera.
All right, so reason number one why you wanna get the Canon EOS 3 is because it feels like a DSLR. Even if you're shooting with a Canon mirrorless bodies, you can pick up this Canon 5D, or if not 5D, this kind of reminds me of the 5D, this Canon EOS 3 and just shoot with it. It's kind of no frills. Uh, one of the things that the main difference between the 3 and the 5D is just that you're shooting film. Now the button layout is definitely different on the 5D, but it's not so different that you can't pick this camera up, point it, click the shutter, and just shoot with it. I mean, the button layout is super simple. There's not a whole lot that will get in your way of capturing the image that you want. One of the features that this camera has that I think is super unique uh, and it really was above its time when this camera came out in 1998 is that it has eye autofocus. Not the eye autofocus that you and I kind of think of today where the camera will pick up on an eye and will track focus throughout it. This camera, as you look through the viewfinder, actually has a setting to where it will calibrate where your pupil is looking and will put the autofocus point that, that where you're looking at where your eye is going. It's super trippy. Uh, I did get mine to work pretty regular. You do have to calibrate using this little section here. Let me see. You do have to calibrate it with this little thing here. If you can kind of see, uh, we'll calibrate where your eye is going, but it does work spectacularly well. Uh, for a camera release in 1998. I really think that what Canon did was they took this technology, which they didn't really put in any of their other cameras. They may have put it in a camera or two that I may not know of, but that they use this and then use that for their eye autofocus uh, feature in their current cameras with the R6. I'm actually really surprised that the eye autofocus did not make it into their first few digital, their 5D lineup or their one uh, EOS one lineups for their digital cameras, their one Ds. So you can technically, uh, this has an advanced, an advanced feature that really isn't in any other SLR camera that you will pick up today. So it is uh, a unique feature. It's not a feature necessarily to run out to buy it, but it is a unique feature that you can use. You know, and the thing, the other thing that I really, really enjoy about the Canon EOS 3 is that it still remains affordable. Now, I bought this camera roughly 12 years ago and it only ran me about $125. Today, you can find them on eBay for around 300 bucks, but it still gets the job done, even for $300, which is pretty cheap for an SLR. Uh, in my eyes, for this kind of quality, it is still something that you can kind of go out and afford. Even if you break it, you can always replace it. Now, Canon is not servicing their 35 millimeter film cameras anymore, but there are so many out there that you can replace it or you can find one in user quality that will still just work. There is one small, I kind of feel like I need to talk about this. There is one small thing that will pretty much render this camera useless and it's called it's like you'll see like a blinking bc on the top viewfinder and essentially what that does is it says that you need a new battery it's letting you know that the battery needs to be fixed or changed out however even after i've had a, one or two of these where even after i've changed the battery it just wouldn't work quite the same um if you looked at any of the forums or but you can see like it's just a common flaw in this camera. Canon used to service them, but they don't anymore. You may be able to find a third party service or for this camera, but I mean, they're cheap enough by the time you pay to get it fixed, you might as well just go out and buy a new one at this point. Now, the second reason why I think you're going to love this camera is it has a ton of lenses that you can buy for it. The EF mount has over 80 lenses and they are all over the place in prices. I shoot with primarily L mount lenses because I want the best 
possible quality out of my images, but you can easily get the 51.2, which costs $1,200, uh, 50 millimeter, or you can get the 51.8, which only costs like 75 bucks or $85 new. Uh, and the thing is, this is like they have uh, focal lengths from eight millimeters to 12,000 millimeters. They got zoom lenses, prime lenses, uh, cheap prime lenses, expensive prime lenses. There's literally nothing that Canon does not have. for this camera that you can't buy. Now, you can even save even more money if you decide to actually buy used lenses, which I would highly recommend. There's a lot of uh, options out there, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, KEH, you name it, you can find a used Canon lens. Heck, there's probably a used Canon EF mount lenses floating around your house from your parents when they shot with Canon cameras when you were a kid or they may just have some cameras. I would just ask a relative if they have uh, any Canon cameras and you may be surprised with what you can find. Now, the one thing that I do love about the 80, the, e, the 80, the EF mount cameras is that you can also use them to adapt to the RF mount cameras, which is Canon's new mirrorless cameras. And to be a hundred percent honest with you, I think the EF mount lenses actually work better on the RF mount using the adapter. So I really have yet to run out and replace all of my EF mount lenses with RF mount. I only have two RF mount lenses, the lens that I'm recording on, the 15 to 35, and I have uh, a 16 millimeter RF lens. So, <laughs> but I have a plethora of EF mount lenses that work fantastic on the RF mount lens. So you could technically have one system with an adapter and alternate your lenses between your SLR and your new mirrorless camera. Now the RF mount lenses do not mount to the EF mounts. Maybe you could find like a third party adapter that may adapt it, but I'm sure you're gonna lose a ton of the functionality of the RF mount lenses when it comes to like adapting it to an EF mount, if that's even possible, which I'm not even really sure. So I don't even really know why I'm talking about it. All right, reason number three, and I feel like this is probably the most important reason for why you may wanna run out and get pick up this camera, is the button simplicity and the metering mode. Now, the, I'm gonna talk about the metering mode first before I talk about the button simplicity. Canon's metering mode essentially has remained the same since their SLRs into their DSLRs. There's been minor advancements and it to make it a little bit more accurate, but it's essentially the same thing, even in their mirrorless cameras. So if you are thinking about uh, getting a, one of these, you can just rest assured that the metering modes are gonna work the exact same way that they're gonna work on your R6, or if you're still shooting the 5D Mark series, it's gonna work the same. So you're gonna get uh, images that are going to look the same, just depending upon what film stock you are shooting. So you can rest assured that the metering modes are going to be uh, what you know if you're already shooting camera can Canon cameras. Now, I want to talk about the button simplicity of this. I have shot literally Leicas, Canon, Sony's, Fuji's. I shot a Nikon. I had a one night affair with a Nikon. I will never shoot Nikon ever again. If you're a Nikon lover, my apologies, but you're watching a video on the Canon EOS three. So maybe you're thinking about, you know, like cheating on your bay or something like that. But the button simplicity means that you can literally just pick this camera up and shoot with it. It kind of goes back to shooting with the DSLRs uh, of past 
where you really only had to worry about three things, the aperture, the shutter speed, and the film stock. That's all you really have to worry about with this camera. Sometimes when I'm shooting on some of the more advanced mirrorless cameras like I have in the past, what I have found is that there are so many buttons on the camera that do so many different things that I realize that the only thing I really need to do to take a great photograph are three main things. And that's just aperture, shutter speed, and film stock speed. I mean, there are legends of our craft in photography that shot with cameras that are far less superior than the cameras that we're shooting with today and still got wonderful images. And the thing that I love the most is that this camera just literally gets out of its way. You can pick it up, concentrate on those three things and make sure that you are ready to go out and shoot as many images <laughs> as you have film rolls to shoot on. Now, I want to let you know this. This camera is, I'm just going to be honest with you, is far less superior than any camera that you're shooting with today digitally. Um, there's a lot of things digitally that you can go out and just create. And maybe you are thinking about getting into film photography and maybe you're thinking about tiptoeing into 35 millimeter film photography and you want to get something that you know. You can pick this camera up and just know where your hands go. It has a lot of the features that you have on any of your Canon cameras today or really on any camera. And because of its simplicity in use and because it's inferior use, you don't have to worry about all the buttons and dials and stuff like that. You can really kind of just get into this camera and just go. Ultimately, I'm going to tell you what I pretty much share on any camera review or anything that I share on YouTube is that the camera is just a tool. It is not going to make you a better photographer. The only thing that is going to make you a better photographer is to actually go out, pick up your camera and photograph something with it. Photograph as much as you want with it. Go out and explore and make mistakes, but you just go out and take photographs. I think so often we get so wrapped up into what we're shooting with, regardless if it's a Leica or if it's a Konica or if it's a Nikon, Pentax, Fuji GFX. There's all these cameras out there and they all take wonderful images. There is not a bad camera on the market today. There just isn't. The thing that is going to matter is what you do with the camera that you have. If so if you're thinking about getting a Canon EOS 3 and you're looking for reasons, hopefully you found something in this video that um, might make you run out and pick one up. Maybe because it's the path of least resistance and you already have some EF mount lenses hanging out at home that you're just, you know, you can just repurpose and use on this camera. I don't want you to run out and buy an all new system unless you absolutely want to and have the money to do so. But really what I want to encourage you is just to go out and create and create something new. Just shoot a roll of film a day or a roll of film a week and see what you get. Just go out and snap photographs for the love of doing it. Because after all, that is why we are here and that is what we do um, as creatives. But those are just three reasons why I think the Canon EOS 3 should be your next camera. I really hope you enjoy this and maybe you picked up a thing or two from this video. I have several reviews of other cameras that are coming up here in the near future and film stocks and film lenses that I'm, I've been like just putting in a rotation and just photographing with. But uh, I just want to say thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, uh, hit the subscribe button and uh, give me a sub. And if you don't, that's okay too. I'm doing it because I love creating images and I love creating videos for you and if it can be a value of someone uh, to someone then I'm all the more appreciative for it. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.